Hey guys, it's Branson and today I wanted to talk to you guys about some big news that is affecting me, it's affecting this channel, uh, and that is as of Friday of last week, my wife quit her job as an engineer and I will be going full time on this poker grind, on the content creation grind. So I'll be posting more for you guys, that's really exciting. Um, but I will also be providing for not just me, my wife and my two year old daughter. Um, so it is quite nerve wracking, <laughs> um, but it's only really because of you guys that it's even possible. So I wanted to say thank you to you guys. And also if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, at this time, I'm really, really hoping that I'll be able to make it as a poker player and content creator. So really all the support is super, super important and it's, it's super, super appreciated by me. So please go ahead and like and comment on as many videos as you guys can uh, going forward. So yeah, that's the news that I have and uh, let's jump into this session. We're playing five, five, ten at the gardens. So hit that intro. Cheers. With the guy Branson, who has the Branson poker logs. <laughs> no! Let's go, let's go. Tell him he's got a lot of class and it's all low. Let's get this vlog started. I buy into the 5-5-10 game for the max of $800. And the first hand I play is 6-7 of clubs in the big blind. The cutoff limps, the button limps, the small blind limps, but not today. It is no time to limp. I raise to $70 and only the cutoff calls. Heads up to a flop of king, queen, five, rainbow. It's a solid flop for my range. I should have all the solid kings, queens, and sets. So I bet $75. Unfortunately, the cutoff calls, but I plan to continue barreling on a lot of turns, especially if it gives me a straight or flush draw. The turn is a six which is actually one of the few cards I don't want to keep betting on. The reason is that I hit a pair, so now I'm ahead of a five, small pocket pairs, as well as any straight draws. With my showdown value, I check, he checks back, and the river is the deuce of clubs. I check again, but now he bets $60. Super annoying. It's only 20% of the pot. I think I'm most likely behind, but every now and then, this could be 10 jack or some other weird hand. Either way with this bet sizing, I feel like he's pretty weak and I think it might be a good spot to turn my hand into a bluff and raise. Um, I think about it, but ultimately I chicken out and just call. He shows queen nine off and I lose the hand. I'm pretty sure if I did it, I would have been able to bluff him off the hand, but I wasn't able to pull the trigger this time. All right, moving on to a bomb pot, I pick up 8-10 off in the low jack. Six of us go straight to a flop of 8-9 deuce with two hearts. Action checks to me, I have middle pair and some backdoor straight draws. I decide to bet $60. Only the under the gun calls, where heads up to a jack on the turn and he checks to me. When my opponent just calls my flop bet, I think he often has a 9, 8, or draw of some kind. 7-10 and queen 10 just made straights, but... If he has an 8, 9 flush draw or some other straight draws, he's not going to like pressure. In addition, I block the possible straights by having a 10, and I do have a straight draw myself in case he calls. I bet $175, and my opponent thinks, then raises to $500. Alright, so... <laughs> I'm guessing he just hit a straight or maybe two pair. I fold and sure enough, he shows queen 10 off. So definitely a lucky turn for him and I'm glad I folded. So I'm currently down around 600 bucks. Safe to say it's not going great, but hopefully I can turn things around with ace queen off in the small blind. The cutoff raises to $40, the button calls. Seems like a great spot to three bet. So I raise to $200 and everyone folds. Around an hour passes before I finally get another playable hand, pocket tens in the small blind. The hijack opens to $35, I think it's another clear 3 betting spot, and I make it $140. He calls, and we're heads up to a flop of king, queen, nine, rainbow. Never feels good having tens with two over cards, but I still choose to c bet $90. This board should hit my range pretty well, and by holding tens, I double block the straight as well. I honestly am just hoping he folds, and he does, 
But then something really awkward happens. As I'm mucking my cards, they graze the dealer's arm and flip over. My opponent says he folded queen jack, uh, so he had the winning hand. And now I'm just awkwardly sitting there pretending that I meant to show a bluff. Uh, I'm a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, I pick up ace queen off in the cutoff. There's a $20 straddle, so I open to $60. The button, then three bets to 160, and it's back to me. I don't love being three bet, but it's less than a 3x raise, and I have a good hand, so I make the call. The flop comes out 9 10 jack with two clubs. Not a bad flop for my particular hand. I have an open ended straight draw, two over cards, and the ace of clubs. Anyways, I check and flow, and the button bets $400. It's a huge bet over the pot size, and here's the problem. I have $780 left, so if I shove, there's no chance he's folding anything. Also, I'm pretty much behind every single hand he has here. In a 3-bet pot, he has a ton of sets, straights, pair plus straight draws, and even if he's bluffing with a hand like ace king, I still need to catch up and he's blocking my outs. Uh it's it's super unfortunate when you have a big draw, but I think against this huge sizing, the only thing I can do is fold. It sucks, but sometimes you just have to be patient and wait for a better spot. Next, I get king 10 of diamonds in the hijack. There's a $20 straddle again, so I open again to $60. The big blind and straddle call were three ways to a flop of deuce four six with two diamonds. Action checks to me. I do have a flush draw here, but this board should not hit my range at all and should be a lot better for my opponents. I think betting or checking is fine in this instance, but I check and the turn is an eight. The big blind checks, but the straddle now bets $100 and it's on me. I still have two overs and the second not flush draw. So I make the call, the big blind folds, and we're off to a river which comes in offsuit ace. Great. We miss our draws. The straddle bets $325, and I just fold with king high. He shows ace eight of clubs for two pairs, so in hindsight, betting the flop probably would have resulted in me winning the pot, but it's easy to say that after seeing the results. It's a frustrating day. My playable hands are all super far apart. I'm stuck and I can't seem to connect well with the board, but let's hopefully turn things around. I pick up pocket kings in the hijack. Let's go. I open to $35, and music to my ears, the cutoff, three bets to $135. I debate between flat calling and four betting here, but I'm stuck. Hopefully this looks like frustration, and I four bet all in for $705 total. The cutoff thinks, but unfortunately folds, and as he's folding, I caught a glimpse of a deuce, so unfortunately he just didn't have a good hand to call me with at all, <laughs> apparently, but I still make $150. Alright, moving on, I get ace-10 off in the big blind, the cutoff opens to $25, the button calls, $25 is a super small open in this game, I'm out of position, let's 3-bet, I make it $125. Best case scenario, I just pick up the pot now, but the button ends up calling and we're heads up to a flop of king seven deuce rainbow. I put out a C bet of $90 and the button calls. When the button calls my three bet preflop and now just calls this flop bet, I put him on a lot of middling pocket pairs as well as a few mediocre kings. The turn comes a queen. I pick up some additional equity with a gut shot now, but more importantly, it's another high card, so if he has a pocket pair, he won't feel good facing another bet. I don't think I need a huge sizing here to accomplish the job. I bet $200, he folds, and I take it down. I am just moving seats constantly in this game, trying to get in position of action players. Also, maybe changing up my luck a bit. I pick up King-10 off on the button. The low jack opens to $25, the high jack calls. I'm in the best position with an okay hand. It's a cheap price. I make the rare flat call. The small blind, big blind, and straddle come along as well. It's basically a bomb pot now. We're six ways to a jack high flop, and it checks to me. 
I don't feel like bluffing into five other people. I check. The turn is an ace, putting three spades on the board. The big blind bets $75, and it folds around to me. I now have the nut flush draw and a gut shot to a straight, and I'm in position. I call, and the small blind calls as well. Well, surprise, surprise, the river is an offsuit six. Bricks out, I have nothing. Small blind goes all in for $300. The big blind folds, and I just snap fold. Okay, so we are getting deep into the night now. The game is juicy, but I go card dead, which is the worst feeling when a game is good and you have nothing to fight with. After a lot of folding, I finally pick up ace queen off in the small blind. There's a double straddle to $20, a triple straddle to $40, the hijack and cutoff both limp and it's on me. Well, it's me, a triple straddler, two limpers, a $675 chip stack, but all I can think about is my good friend, Marco Kine. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. I'm all in. One by one, my opponents fold, and I add $150 of dead money to my stack. Thanks, Michael Kane. Next, I get King Jack off in the big blind. The under the gun opens to $25. He seemed to be opening a wide range to this small amount. The hijack blind calls, the cutoff calls, the button calls, the small blind calls. It's on me. All these flat calls look like dead money, and I hear Michael in my head. Do not go gently into that good night. Raise. Raise. <laughs> All right. I raised to $200. The initial razor folds. That's great news. There's a high chance everyone folds now, but then the hijack goes all in for around 1.2K. This is the guy who blind called. I was watching him the whole time and I reviewed the footage after. He did indeed blind call. So now I guess he woke up with a hand. It folds back to me. This sucks. This player is wild, but my hand is not very good. My hand's not good. <laughs> Let me see it. Let me see it. Okay. I flip over my cards, and my opponent actually shows me his cards. He has ace king. I need at least 35% equity for this call to be profitable. And against ace king, I know I have around 25%, so I toss my cards into the muck and move on. A couple more hands to go over, I pick up ace 10 off in the low jack, and I raise to $35. The button and straddle call were three ways to a flop of ace five seven with two spades. I have top pair and make a C bet of $60 and only the button calls. The turn is the four of spades and it seems like a terrible card for me. It completes the flush draw, the most likely straight draw of six eight and also brings in some two pair possibilities. I slow down and check but then the button bombs for $225. I just feel like I'm behind here. If he had a weaker ace than me, I think he would just check back, or if he did bet, it would be a smaller sizing than this. So I let my hand go, and the button is nice enough to show ace deuce of spades for the nut flush. Thank goodness I was able to get away from top pair here. Last hand of the vlog, I pick up ace king off in the big blind, the hijack limps, the cutoff raises to $30, the small blind calls, and it's on me. Definitely have to put in a three bet. I raise to $150, only the cutoff calls, and we're heads up to a flop of ace four seven with two diamonds. This is a board I would often see bet as the three better, but this time I decide to check. Holding the king of diamonds, I'm less scared of a flush draw, plus the stack sizes are quite low compared to the pot. I don't think I'll have a problem getting all the money in if he connected with the board in any way. Anyways, after I check, he goes all in for $500. I snap call, the board runs out ace six, and he shows ace jack of hearts. So no matter what, the money was getting in there, but I'm still happy with the way I played it. And that win brings me a little closer to even, but Soon after that, I rack up and cash out. What's up, you guys? That was a pretty long night. Six and a half hours is a little bit on the longer session for me. And I stayed because it was a great game towards the end and I just couldn't pick up cards. Sometimes you're just card dead. Um, 
Tonight, I was in the game for $1,600 total and out for $1,123 for a loss of $477. I mean, it could have been worse. Um, definitely could have been better. Really frustrating because there was so much action and I just couldn't get any hands or I couldn't hit. Uh, and so that's the way it goes sometimes on the grind. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.